usually I like to have a few different materials of snares. Sure. So I'll have it wood and a metal and whatnot, and maybe different types of woods. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll usually have a variety of heads on them as well. Yeah. Just the normal thing that I I tend to use um, Remo Ambassador X okay. on my snares. They hold up forever. Yeah. And they just sound super fat. You can like really crank on them um, and still have it sound really fat. Yeah. Um, I do tend to tune my snares like still kind of low. Okay. Um, so they do get a little bit pillowy sometimes. So it's like, you know, it's hard to do doubles and stuff right. like that, you know, but yeah. it's all just about like getting like a big fat crack out of them, you know. So and even sometimes I'll even like have one or two lugs like you know, tension rods just floating around and they're like not even doing anything. There'll be wrinkles in the head and for all sure. kinds of stuff, you know, but like it just sounds big and fat, you know, for different songs, obviously yeah. that's what I want, but in the studio. So I'll do that. Um, and I'll just have things tuned different ways and I'll always have, I'll probably have an ambassador around somewhere on, on some drum, you know, just so it's something more sensitive. Yeah. Depending on the song and the part. So right. yeah, I like to have some varieties there, but. The rest of the kit is pretty much just doing my thing okay. that I always do. Yeah. So are you strictly using all Remo heads? Mm-hmm. Yeah, all Remos. What What are you using on your yeah. toms, top and bottom? Um, emperors, coated emperors on top, and then just uh, just like uh, ambassadors on the bottom, clear. Okay. Yeah. And then what about your pretty. kick drum? Uh, usually I'm doing power stroke, three, okay. I guess, three, right? Okay, yeah. yeah. And then just like whatever on the front emperor on the front, like a ebony emperor. Actually, the thing I have right now on on my kick that I really love is a fiber skin. Oh, nice. Yeah. And it's super cool. And uh, I, I only started doing it like a year ago or something. And I love it. Okay. Love it. Yeah. It's super cool. And fiber skins on both sides. Yeah. Uh, and on, it's awesome. Oh, on both sides? On the batter too? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is that? It's pretty cool. Are it's those pretty wild? Are those pretty thin? I mean, I know I, I've played a kit with the fiber skin on the Rezo, but I'm never on the batter. And yeah, I mean, I've had on the on on the um, yeah on the resonant side for uh, for a while, but I've messed around with it on on the uh, on the batter side as well. Okay. But I guess currently I don't have one on there. It's just it's another it's the, uh, the Power Stroke Three. Yeah. Again, that is kind of where I always tend to go back to. Sure. But uh, yeah, I like that fiber skin a lot though. Okay. That's cool for right. sure. Right on. Yeah. Man. Although, what did we ended up doing on some of this last tour stuff when Air for Free came out? We got this uh, this kind of logo kind of thing. It's like these the three dots, the three different color dots: the red, yellow, and blue dot. Right. Yeah. And on so on the kit, like we ordered these, I don't know what they are, like these vinyl like sticker things, or whatever. So we put like the dots on the kick drum, you know. Yeah. And it just sounds horrible now with those on really? it. Really. Oh yeah, it just totally ruined the sound. <laughs> but but like when we did it, you know, the guys who were running sound, they're just like sounds exactly the same to us. Like you know, cuz both we got two mics on the kick. Um we got a uh Beta 52, Sure Beta 52 yeah. hanging in the middle. Okay. Um and then a 91 as well just like sitting down uh in the bottom of the kick. Yeah. So both of them are inside. Right. And they're miking the the batter head, you know, so they're not even listening to that to the reso head at all. Okay. So to me, like acoustically, the drum sounds like pretty terrible now. Okay. But for them, it didn't affect a thing. So, gotcha. Yeah, all right. Well, it looks good on stage. So yeah. We'll just <laughs> let's roll with it. Man, I, that's that, that's it's refreshing to hear drummers talk about the attention to detail and it's like, uh -huh. you know, over a lot of people, understandably look at it just like, oh, you're just playing drums. But yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. what goes into right. it? What advice? Right. What advice would you give? You know, when approaching uh, tuning or style? I mean, you know, what 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 advice would you give to drummers who want to go to that next step and make their yeah, I mean, better or whatever? Right, right. I think that I mean the biggest thing with any kind of working on music stuff is just using your ears, right? Yeah. So um, and really paying attention to other people's kits like the way that they sound you know and just learning like oh what the heck are you doing with this tom like how did you get it to sound like that or whatever and just like asking questions from people yeah so much of what i learned you know it's just from asking people and having conversations and whatnot yeah. uh now we could you know we can watch all kinds of videos on youtube about how to tune drums and stuff like that so you can 
glean all kinds of stuff from, from those types of things as well. But the other thing that really, really helped me um, was my experience working in music production myself with other people. Um, Cause I've had the opportunity to work on all kinds of different styles of music and yeah. with all kinds of different drummers. And as like the recording engineer, you know? Right. So you just, I was able to have this experience where I'm constantly seeing what other people are doing and hearing the results of it and being the guy who's like trying to make it sound good at the same time, you know, yeah. micing it up and everything. So I just definitely gained a lot of experience um, and knowledge through that. Yeah, you know, for sure. For sure. So um, I think that is, that's really helped me to kind of explore ways that you can make drums sound with, with different heads and things that will work for one style, not for another. Sure. And I think that's where a lot of people can kind of get, get stuck um, as far as the way that they tune or, or um, even their playing style. And, and it's just that we spend so much time working on our own music yeah. that um, we kind of do our thing Right. And and maybe maybe you have very limited limited experience outside of that. Yeah. Um and so thankfully I feel really privileged to have had the opportunity to work with so many different people and so many different styles of music mm -hmm. that now I feel like I I have the personal experience of working in all these different styles. Yeah. And kind of seeing how to do things and how to get certain results. So right. if you know so that's the other thing. Just experiment, you know, try out heads that you've never used before or tune like wildly different and just see what in the yeah. world happens, you know, because yeah. people have like really, really different tuning techniques even too. Yeah. That that end up having similar results, but they might have a way different approach of how to get there. Right. Um, so, you know, the whole time you're trying to get to a certain place, you're going to find um some kind of interesting things like, Oh, how did I just make it sound like that? That's wild. Yeah. Whatever. A lot of times, a lot of times it's like, uh, those kind of insights are super helpful when you're trying to make your drum sound good and it sounds like garbage Yeah. and you're like, Oh, I know why it sounds like garbage. It's because whatever. You know? Right. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think yeah. experience, that's the biggest thing, honestly, just trying sure. things out. Yeah. The trial and error thing. Well, like you're, sure. you're saying too, you're engineering and um, yeah. mixing other bands and everything. The a lot of what we like to do with these interviews is getting the perspective of a drummer or the bass player or a producer yeah. engineer on how the drums affect the recording process or live or something oh, yeah. like that. So for you, having a lot of touring experience and recording yeah. and now also doing production and engineering. Um, I've talked about this with a couple of different guys, but Garrett Goodwin, uh, we've, we've, we know him pretty well. Um, he's, uh, he, he and I were talking and he said, if you've got a drummer who's been playing for a year and yeah. he's really teachable and he just takes every punch you throw at him and he gives it his best shot. And he's got a great attitude. And then you've got a drummer who's been playing for 30 years uh, yeah. and he's the worst guy in the world. A producer uh -huh. and engineer is going to choose the first guy nine times out of 10 for you sure. as for you being a drummer and an engineer. Um, yeah. How, what, what do you have to say to that? Well, um, I mean, I think I agree with that. You know, yeah. there's obviously like a skill level that's required when you're recording or playing live, honestly, yeah. you know, you're only as tight as the drums. Right. Um, but, um, the ability to, and it really goes with any instrument, um, is so important you know so um being able to kind of insert yourself or take yourself maybe maybe it's about taking yourself out of the situation a little bit and seeing what the bigger picture is yeah because a lot of times a lot of times the bigger picture is maybe i shouldn't do a three bar fill there you know because it doesn't make sense or whatever you know sure. but if you're just super in love with your own drumming yeah. <laughs> and you're like well this is what i do yeah. Then uh, yeah, no one's really gonna want to uh, hire you for like other drumming gigs or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, so much of music is just about being being a good person, you know. Yeah. Being like not being a jerk and like being easy to work with and being musical. A lot of, and a lot of being musical is just working with the song. It's all about the serving the song. Who right. cares? Who cares about the drummer if they're doing like 
whatever, like super complicated things. It's like real, yeah. it's real cool. It's like really awesome for other drummers. Yeah. But ultimately it's the songs that matter. You know, we're all doing, we're playing, we're musicians cause we love music. Yeah. You know, um, if, if we're about just like showing off on drums, that's all good, but you know, you can do like drum clinics or yeah. do it. I don't know. You can do something else. You don't have to do it in the middle of like a pop song. Yeah. Sometimes you just need to play like ACDC and just be done with it. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Sure. Um, so, yeah. so when you're working with bands, do you ever feel, um, do you get the drummers asking you for what you think they should do given your yeah. experience or do you ever kind of just like, well, this sounds good, but this may sound better for drummers who are watching this when they go in a studio and have mm -hmm. any recording experience, what would you say that they should expect from the engineer or producer? Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. my, my philosophy, my philosophy when I'm producing for people is always just to make them as much of them as possible. You know, it's yeah. like, it's like, Hey guys, I'm not in your band. Right. But like, I'm super invested in what you're doing. Like, my name's going to be on it too. Like, yeah. I want it to be really good. Yeah. And, and you want it to be really good. So I think one thing is just to realize you're all on the same team. Right. Um, and, um, and as a drummer, you know, it's really easy. Well, as, as any sort of instrumentalist or vocalist or anything, like yeah. you just get really, really married to the parts that you've developed over time, you know? Right. Um, but I always tell people like, Hey, you know, um, hopefully this isn't the last song you'll ever record. Yeah. You know? So, you know, why don't we try something different? Like we all, we feel like this is going to work better. Yeah. Why don't you just try it? Come in and check it out. And, uh, you know, we can reevaluate that or whatever, you know? Um, so personally, like I try to be like pretty gentle about it. Okay. Um, but like make it known what I think at the same time. You sure. Know? Then again, I didn't write the song. Right. So like ultimately if people are going to really fight me on something they're, and they're just like, no, I really want this part, whatever, you know, uh, okay. You know, yeah. we can, we can do that. That's fine. You know? Right. Um, but I want to serve the song and, and hopefully them as musicians want to do the same thing. So, you know, I mean, I'm not always right. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So I'm okay with that too. You know, yeah. if someone's just like, no, I know the song, this is how it goes. This yeah. is a big part of it. You know, I can be like, oh, all right, yeah. all right, that's fine. We can we can roll with that then. Right. So so, so even so even as a drummer who's been in plenty of studios yeah. all over and worked with different engineers and producers, what mm -hmm. advice would you give to drummers as a drummer? Like, hey, make sure you're prepared here. Or oh yeah, um, yeah. You know, going into a studio, what what advice would you give for for recording um, to those guys? Well, one, it's like have your gear ready. Like, there's nothing worse than going in and being stressed out because like you need to change all your heads now yeah or your pedals are all squeaking sure or whatever you know yeah just figure that stuff out beforehand like go in and just be ready you know so that's one thing because that's just like a stressor that's totally unnecessary yeah and it just chews time too and that's just money like there's no reason like if i have people that I'm recording, like there's no reason for you to pay me while you change drums. That's ridiculous. Right. Like, I mean, I'll take your money, but that's ridiculous. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just silly. Um, and some, I mean, sometimes it's fine if I'm going to throw a new snare head or something on, cause it's like we're setting up mics and all that stuff takes a super long time. So, sure. but yeah, just be prepared with your equipment, know the songs, you know, I all, almost always yeah. have, like charts that I wrote out just yeah. with the arrangement of the songs, even if I know the songs pretty well. Right. Um, but I, you know, I, I'll play on other people's records. So a lot of times I don't know their songs very well, you know? Okay. I might have just like heard them a handful of times and I'm just like writing down the arrangements and like kind of thinking through ideas while I'm doing it. Yeah. So we'll go in and be recording something and I don't know what it is that we're going to be recording. I might have some ideas. Yeah. And they might have some ideas, but literally it's like, okay, let's just let it roll. And then I'll play through some stuff. Hey, what do you think of this? You know? Yeah. So we're changing things up. And if I'm worrying about the parts that I'm playing, the last thing I need to be worrying about is like, oh shoot, that was supposed to be a pre-course there, whatever. So yeah. I always have notes, always have notes. Um, 
And then the other thing is just like be comfortable playing with the metronome. Yeah. Which is super obvious to some people, other people not so much, you know. Um, for years and years and years I've played live with, with a click, so right. it's just really normal for me. Yeah. Um, but in the studio you don't want it to be weird, you know. Right. If you don't play with the click live, totally fine. Yeah. But maybe maybe do a couple rehearsals with one before you go in the studio. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard guys say it, and I kind of used to be the same way with Click, where it's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I, I don't really like Click. It throws me off or whatever. But And like you said, live, you know, it can go either way. But recording, yeah. it's a pretty important detail. <laughs> yeah, and initially, like, in real life, hey, I didn't use a Click for years, you sure. know. Um, but once I did, uh, once I got comfortable doing it, yeah. I was just like, I can never not have a Click now. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Like I actually love playing with the click. Yeah. I feel like it takes so much pressure off of me. Sure. Um, and I've just got this thing just clicking away in my ear and I just play along with it. Yeah. I don't have to worry about it. I'm not going too fast, too slow. I just like get in that groove and just play the song. Yeah. You know? And it just, I don't know. Again, like I said earlier about this coffee thing, like yeah. you don't have to worry because you didn't have coffee. Right. Or, or you had three cups of coffee. Like, yeah. it might feel different based on what's in your system, but you know it is the same. Yeah. That song is the right speed. Right. Um, so, yeah. And it's it's weird, too. When you, when you get comfortable with the click, you, like, you almost stop hearing it. Yeah. Yeah. And every once in a while, I'll be like, oh, shoot, I got to pay attention to the click because right. it'll just disappear into the music. Yeah. You know? Um, but that's good. It's like when you're super comfortable with it, you know, it's not a stressor to you anymore. It's actually a comfort, you know, yeah. not hearing it. It's like, where is the click? You, know, yeah. you freak out. No, it's funny. So, you say, it's funny. You say that I was about to, I was about to mention, I forget where I heard it from, but somebody yeah. said, you know, you're on top of your timing when you can't hear the click. That's when you know you're, you're on it. And yeah, it's almost a little disconcerting though. Like sometimes <laughs> when it disappears, you're just like, where is the click? Yeah. And you're like, oh, I'm like. I'm really on top of things right now, you know, yeah. but, uh, yeah, it can be, it can be a little disconcerting when it disappears. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of times for me, it's just cause I'm not even paying attention to it. It's sure. just in there, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. what, what would you say or how, what's your experience been like playing live in your quick cuts? Like I know for oh, me, like the worst, yeah, it goes out in front of a couple thousand people and you're like, okay, now all yours are on me. Um, right. What, right. What, what do you do in that, in that instance? Yeah, you just you just gotta roll with it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Then I really just have to start concentrating on tempo, and I feel like I do a pretty good job. But then all of a sudden, that like insecurity of like, am I speeding up or whatever, yeah. like goes on, you know? Yeah. And I mean, there's such a tendency to speed up as yeah. a drummer when you don't have a click. Yeah. Um, it's just like, especially in fills and things like that, you know? Right. You try and rush through them because you're like, this is real fast, or yeah. whatever, you know. Um, but yeah, it just, uh, it's definitely weird. It's uh, it's a little bit stressful and just like trying to figure out what happened. Yeah. Um, because you don't you don't know if like your ears came unplugged or yeah. like maybe it's still there for everyone else. I don't know. Sure. You know, so I usually I've gone through a couple different things. I've used like click stations. Yeah. Or um, currently I'm using Ableton. Which, it's like almost just exclusively click in it. Yeah, it's like a little bit overkill, but um, but it's cool. I can use like the launch pad with Ableton and just like go what to whatever song I need to like super quick. And, yeah, um, so it makes a lot of sense for that. But um, uh, yeah, you just don't know what part in the chain has has fallen apart. Like, has the computer shut off? Has the yeah. FireWire cable come out? Has, are your ears just unplugged? Whatever. So right. it's definitely, there's definitely like a moment of panic where you got to try and figure that out. Because yeah. if everyone else has click and you don't, it could get real messy. Yeah. Obviously. Right, for sure. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'll just panic. Yeah. Just, pa <laughs> just, just panic. panic. Yeah, yeah, just, just panic. Out. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 So, Man, it's, it has been really good talking to you. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people. Fun. I know a lot of people wondered. Um, at least I know I did. Where, where, where you went for a little bit with Reliant K, and then right, you came yeah. back, and you said you've been playing with them for a couple of years or the past yeah. couple tours and stuff. 
Um, right. What what does your future look like with Reliant K and was it look like with your production and engineering, you know, from here to yeah. today on, what does that look like for you? Right. Right. Uh, well with Reliant K, like we're just slowly doing our thing. Like we haven't played shows in a, in a little bit now. It's been uh, a lot of months since we played a show and uh, like Tyson's working on some solo stuff and some people are doing some different things, but I'm sure at some point we'll, uh, we'll get out there and hit a few cities again. Yeah. Um, but that's like kind of up in the air right now. So I, I don't know where, where that stands, but you know, we're, we're still, I'm still in, yeah. we're doing our thing. Cool. Uh, slow, slow, albeit. Yeah. Um, but then as far as like myself, myself, I do a lot of engineering, like I said, producing and right. mixing. Um, so I've always got projects coming and going and I'm usually, uh, in the middle of one, two, three, four projects at a time, you know, and sure. Certainly based on people's schedules and whatnot, they all kind of have to overlap a lot of times to, to yeah. make sense, uh, which is which is totally fine. It's good. It keeps you, uh, keeps you on your toes a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm just working on a lot of projects for people and more and more mixing yeah. things that I didn't produce, uh, which is super cool because you can be really, really creative in that process. And you can kind of step in like late in a process. Someone's like, hey, why don't you mix this song for me? Cool. And yeah. they like send you files. You have no idea what it is, what it's going to be even, you know? Right. So sometimes there'll be a rough mix or something, but it really gives you an opportunity to just be this outside source, like this, this influence in the song here. And you have no attachments to the song. Right. It's this thing that's like still pretty rough feeling, you know, when it comes to you all dry. And sometimes there'll be editing that I'll need to do and stuff like that. So it just like comes in such a form that you feel like you can really, really, create a feel with it you know yeah so i really really enjoy mixing a cool. ton uh it's super fun and i spend a lot of time on it and uh i just like really feel proud of songs when i get done mixing because i'm just like I, I just did that like i put my cool. stamp on this and again it's like you know it's not my song i didn't write it yeah. i'm not performing on it but like you can do so much in the mix you Absolutely. know and i just love i love that part of the process so much yeah. um so yeah i've been doing a lot more of that um, people hit me up. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So, and then I've been looking into a couple other things too. Um, trying to figure out what else to do with my engineering. Cause I mean, it's audio engineering is really, that's my, my thing, you know? Yeah. So I've been talking with a few people about, you know, some like podcast stuff and I've got Sweet. a few other projects that I'm kind of thinking about as well. So, um, and then my, my wife, Rachel and I work on music together um occasionally we haven't really in a few years uh very actively but we did start writing some stuff recently and okay. um have a couple things yeah a couple things in various states of recordedness cool uh that i'm pretty excited about um and we haven't even settled on a name for the project or anything but yeah so i got some music stuff coming up that's yeah. you know that's my stuff and uh always always recording projects with other people, which is a blast. Cool. So yeah, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know? Yeah. It sounds, yeah. it sounds like you're staying pretty busy. Yeah. Most of the time I mean, the, in doing audio production, it's like, it's definitely like up and down, you know, oh, yeah. there'll be, there'll be times where I'm like really crazy busy yeah. and, and uh, it, having a hard time keeping up with, what everyone wants, you know, they're like, oh, I want to release this song. And it's yeah. like, ah, I don't know what to tell you. I can't even mix it for this long. And then it's got to go to mastering. And then I gotta get, you know, it's just like, yeah. um, and then other times, and then other times it's just like, oh, well, I got like one thing to do this week. Right. <laughs> You're trying to fit, you know, uh, so it's always just trying to, to figure that out and kind of weather, weather the, uh, the slow times, yeah. you know, for sure. so, uh, but yeah, for the, for the most part, I, I keep pretty busy cool but, yeah well like you said people hit you up where can people mm -hmm. contact you at yeah i recently just like abandoned the name i was working under okay. um which was which was danger house but don't worry about that because that's that's nothing anymore yeah that email <laughs> that email address doesn't even work anymore <laughs> um yeah but you can honestly like probably the easiest thing right now because i don't even have a site or anything set up under the new but my new thing is just under my name dave douglas productions okay but i literally i have no site or anything right now um so yeah you can just hit me up like dave douglas productions at gmail or any of like 
personal social media things, which are all just whatever social media slash I am Dave Douglas all spelled out. Cool. Hit me up and be like, hey, mix my song, or hey, can I come record with you, or yeah, or whatever, or hey, I don't have a drummer, play drums on my stuff and send it back. Yeah, I can do that too. There you go. Which is super fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, Dave, thanks for taking time and talking. And um, yeah, it's been a blast. I I don't really get to talk drums or gear or record. I don't get to talk like this to most people. Most people are just like, ugh. Yeah. It's super. Yeah. Yeah. So this is good. No, it's fun. No, it's great. Like we've we've like I said, we've interviewed you know drummers like Garrett Goodwin and Matt Griner, and we talked with uh, yeah. We talked with Matt Nevesky, the bass player, and we've talked with engineers. And so getting your perspective on drums as a drummer and yeah. as a producer and engineer is right. really, really valuable. So, um, cool, man. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for taking the time and good talking to you, man. Yeah, it was a blast. Thanks for having me. Sexy, take me straight to the heart of it. The